Hey guys, welcome back. Hope all of you are doing good. This is your host Devang Sharma. आज की वीडियो में बात करने वाले हैं वेरी 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 इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक एंड अ वेरी कॉमनली आस्ट इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चन अबाउट जावा सो विदाउट अ फर्दर डू लेट्स स्टार्ट द वीडियो हे गाइस लेट मी इंट्रोड्यूस टू अ वंडरफुल इनिशिएटिव टेकन बाय न्यूटन स्कूल दिस इनिशिएटिव इज कॉल्ड लॉन्च पैड दिस इज फॉर द पीपल हु वांट टू स्टार्ट कोडिंग फ्रॉम स्क्रैच एंड लर्न द बेसिक्स ऑफ डिफरेंट प्रोग्रामिंग लैंग्वेजेस फॉर एब्सोल्युटली फ्री ऑफ कॉस्ट यस I repeat absolutely free of cost. It has plenty of resources available here including courses from Java, Python, Node.js, CPP, React.js and DBMS and SQL management. Also, few of these courses are available in Hindi as well. So what are you waiting for? Applications are open now. Apply today to become a rockstar developer within 6 months. So welcome back to Newton School Launchpad and our complete professional Java series. This is a complete Java series from a freshman to a professional developer. Irrespective of whether you are a freshman or a junior developer or a senior developer, you will find something related to you that will help you excel in your career. So, without a further ado, let's start the today's video. Let's start today's class. In today's class, we have a very very important topic: method overriding in Java. Before understanding in this video, we are going to cover what is method overriding, what are its use cases, how it is implemented to perform runtime polymorphism in Java, its examples with live coding, and some of the examples like why method overriding is required and what will happen if method overriding is not given. So, starting with the first definition, what is method overriding? If subclass or a child class has the same method as declared in the parent class, it is known as method overriding in Java. Let's try to understand. In the previous video, we have discussed about inheritance. So there we have a parent class and we have a child class. Child class inherits some properties or attributes of a parent class. So if that child class also called the subclass, it has the same method. I am repeating same method as declared in the parent class. It is known as method overriding in Java. In other words, if a subclass provides the specific implementation of the method that has been declared by one of its parent class, it is known as method overriding. Usage of Java method overriding. The usage are number one. Method overriding is used to provide the specific implementation. I am focusing again on the word specific implementation of a method, which is already provided by its superclass or parent class. Second, method overriding is used for runtime polymorphs. Now, what is runtime polymorphism? How it is happened? We are going to see in the subsequent video. Let's understand few things here. Number one, what are the rules for creating Java method as override? First rule is that method must have the same name as in the parent class. Now it's not like similar name. I'm repeating it. I must have the same name as in the parent class. Second, the method must have same parameter as in parent class. Very, very, very important. And that is the difference between method overloading and method override. In case of method overloading, you can have a different parameters or different signature. But in case of method of overriding, it has to be essentially the exact same parameter in the subclass as in the parent class. Third, there must be a is a relationship, and we know that inheritance follow is a relationship. The child class must be inherited from the parent class. Let's understand these rules again. Number one, method must have same name as in the parent class. Number two, method must have same parameter as in parent class. And number three, there must be a is a relationship defined in the methods. Let's try to understand the problem without method overriding. Right? First thing, why do we need method overriding? What will happen in case I don't provide method overriding? So let's understand with the example of live coding and the program. What is the problem that we'll face? If we don't use method over it, let's go to Newton School ID and check out the live code. So as you can see, here is my Newton School ID, which provides me multiple programming languages along with various features like output, compiler output, message, and error messages, and it is feature of custom input and custom output as well. So I am going to show you what is the problem that you will encounter in case I don't give you a method overriding. So let me declare a class vehicle. And another class, let's say name it Y, which will extend Y. So in this case, Y will be my parent class, and Y will be my child class. So in the case of class Y, let me create a function run, and let me print something like. Something like vehicle is running on some state, right? Now I'm going to create the same run function. Same run function. If I do it, 
inside my vehicle class. So if you observe inside my vehicle class, I am going to create an object and I am going to utilize that object using the same function. So I will create an object of type by. I am going to call obj dot. Let's try to understand what should be our output. Our output should be if I am calling the object from the child class. So my output should be y curl is run. Let's see the output. Okay, I see my output as vehicle is done. What is the problem here? The problem here is that my class bike is extending the class vehicle. What if I want to give it a specific implementation? This implementation of world run that is given by the parent class. What I want is there can be multiple classes that are inheriting my parent class. What if I want to give a specific implementation to all of them? And that is where method overriding is required. As you see in the live coding example, the problem that I encounter is that I have to provide a specific implementation of run method in subclass. And that is why we use method override. Now let's see a program which is used which uses the method overriding, how it will see differently. So in this example, we will define the method in the subclass as well as it is defined in the parent class, but with some specific implementations. The name and parameter of the method will be the same and there will be a user relationship between the classes. That's why it is going to be a method overhead. Let's see the code for the same. So this was an example without using a method overhead. Let's modify the same code to implement it using method overhead. I define the function word run inside my bike class. And I said something like bike is run to differentiate between the two run functions. Now, in that case, if I create object.run and I call it, let's see what will be the output. What is the output I get? Output I get is bike is run. So observe carefully, line number 5, line number 13, both are the function run. They have the same parameter list, which is, does not have any parameter. They have the same return time. It's just that implementation is different. What I'm doing inside the run function at line number 5 and what I'm doing inside the run function at line number 3 are entirely different. They are not related to each other in any way. Only the classes bike and classes vehicle are related to each other using the user relation because it's inheritance, right? Class bike is the child class, class vehicle is the parent class. That's the only difference. So this is the advantage that we get using method overheading. I can provide a specific implementation in method override. Although this was not possible if there was no method override. What can be the specific implementation by the way? Specific implementation can be something that bike has specifically that vehicle does not have. For example, vehicle can be a four wheeler, can be a two wheeler. So something like clutch gear or something that is specific to bike or any of the features that are specific to bike only, I can be defined inside this run function. And that is why the specific features are given over. Okay, so we've seen the example of method overriding as well. Now let's understand a real example of method overriding. This was just an example to explain what if method overriding is not used and what if method overriding is used. Now let's understand a real life example which will help us better demonstrate the use case and the value what method overriding is built. To give an example, let me just explain you the use case first. So, Consider a scenario where a bank is a class that provides functionality to get the rate of interest. That rate of interest can be upon FD, that can rate of interest can be upon loan or any other policies. However, the rate of interest varies according to banks. That makes sense as well. For example, SBI, ICICI and Axis Bank, they provide respectively 8%, 7% and 9% rate of interest. If you see in the example, the diagram that I've shown here, we have a class bank, which is of a parent class. It has a function called get rate of interest, which is a flow type. Three classes are extending it. What are the three banks? Number one, SBA, number two, ICIC, and number three, Texas. Now they have the specific get rate of interest. Observe carefully, the name of the function is same, get rate of interest, and the return type is also flow. And interestingly, their parameter will also be the same to make it method override. The only difference is that all of them have their specific implementation. So in case of get rate of interest of SBA, it's going to be 8%. In case of ICIC, it's going to be 7%. In gate of access, it's going to be 9%. But 
the same method is defined in the parent class with the name generator. Let's see how we can implement it via code. Let's go back to Newton's tool ID and code. So first of all, let's declare a class. Class bank. And then I will have three child classes. SBI. It will be extending bank. Then we have ICISI and then we have access. So my bank logic you observe carefully, I have a rate of interest function. Get rate of interest. This is an integer time. It will give me some return value. So in this function, what I am defining here is return zip. This is just in my parent class, get rate of interest. Similar definition will be provided in case of SBI, ICIC, and XS. So, in case of XS, SBI, I have my rate of interest as let's say 8%. Instead of 0, I will return 8. Similarly, in ICIC, I have my rate of interest as let's say 0. ICIC, my rate of interest is 7%. And in case of XS, I have my rate of interest as 9%. So, I will return 9 count. So, what I have done? In my base class, in my base parent class bank, I have a get rate of interest function. The same function with the same written type and the same number of parameters and arguments you can see, I have created three different child classes which are inheriting my parent class bank. All of these have different values, so they have specific implementation of that. Specific implementation means every bank has a specific rate of interest and they are able to implement it using method override. That is the real life use case of method override. Let's run this program and let's try to see the output. So what I will do is, I'll create object of these three classes. Let's say SBI S equal to new SBI. ICICI I equal to new ICI. And then we have the last class as access. Let's print out the values for all of them. Get rate of interest that we are going to be using. Interest for SPI. This is interest for SPI. And we're going to get by get rate of interest method. To access the method, we have to access by object. So s dot get rate of interest. Similarly, we can get it for ICICI as well as for access. This will become i. This will become a. And this will become access. Let's see the output. If you are able to get the output. Let's see the output if we are able to get the output. Let's see the output if we are able to get the output. As you can see, the output is interest for SBI is 8, interest for ICI is 8, 7, interest for XS is 9. Same class, same parent class, different child classes, and all different child classes have their different implementation. Same parent class bank, three different child classes, SBI, ICIC, and XS. Same function get rate of interest is just that their implementation is different. So this ability to provide specific implementation to the child classes, this feature is called method override. Hope you have understood the example of method override as well as the use cases. Now let's understand some very very important functions. First, can we override static method? The answer is no. Static method cannot be overridden, and that will be example as a runtime calling method, which we are going to cover in next videos. If you guys have doubt about static keywords or static methods, static classes, 
please check out the video for static keyword in java which i have uploaded recently to able to understand what are static methods static blocks static classes and so on and so forth next why can we not override static methods it's a good question as we explained in the previous video if you have not watched it the link is in the description do watch it now static method is bound with the class not with the object instance method is bound with an object since static belongs to the class area and instance belongs to the heap area that's why static method cannot be overridden last question can we override java main method so after the java 5 all the main methods are static in nature so that is why you cannot override the java main method in this video just to revise what we have covered is we have understood about what is method overriding what are the usage of method overriding and rules for creating java method overriding then we talk about what will be the problem if method overriding is not provided and then there is an example of method overriding Last, I have given you a real-life use case to understand method overriding in real life. Hope you guys have understood about method overriding, its use cases, how it is implemented in Java, and some important functions related to it. I hope you like this video. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe it, and do watch all the videos in the series in progression to have a better understanding for freshman to professional developer. Feel free to share it with your friends and comment down what is the best part that you like and what else you want me to improve. Till then, see you in the next video. Thank you. To Karna.